What's up, Rudy? How you feeling? Hey, what's you know what going on, man? Dollars, you know what I'm saying? The general Southwest Philly. Love, bro. Really do appreciate you flying doing everything. It's an honor to be here. What's your thoughts on being here at ACAF and all of the art? What's your thoughts on that? It's, it's, it's beautiful to see. You know what I mean? And, and the generation that's dying so fast, man. Like, I'm, you know, born in 86. Uh, my grandmother, my grandfather, uh, my grandfather's name was Fareed. I'm Fareed Jr. My grandma, Aisha, we grew up in that household. My grandmother was with the uh, Black Panther movement back in the days, and she was out here fighting for her rights and just certain things that we grew up on, um, from the incense to the, the, the beautiful carvings. My grandpa did that. He made canes, and just, just it's beautiful. It's needed, you know what I mean? Like, we need to keep this alive. And I'm oh, definitely, sure. I'm definitely behind this, bro. Yeah, definitely, for sure. You definitely, take group. You grew up in the culture and all that. For you sure. Um, talk about your upbringing, Southwest, uh, Bartram Village, the projects and all that. Yeah, man. All we, that for you. we grew up uh, Bartram Village. I was born in Bartram Village projects. Mm -hmm. um, stayed there till we was about five. Fell on some hard times, and my grandpa was living up Abbotsford projects. So we went up there to Germantown. We went to Abbotsford. Stayed till I was like eight. And we came back to Southwest. You know what I mean, 58th and Greenway. You know what I mean. So it was like, it was it was crazy. You know what I mean. It was it was an experience for a young kid, bro. Like just seeing all that shit. Like you know, being from Philly, it's a real thing. You know, we we forced the the, the grow up fast. Sure. You know what I mean. From the things that we see, the things that we've been around. Uh, you know, just your average story. Mine wasn't around. You know, fell victim to the streets. When the drugs came out, dad was a jailbird. Um, grandma took me, mm. and she kept me from two weeks old. And yeah, talk about that was, um, that was that's my baby. All right, uh, let's talk about um, your rap career. When did it start? When did you start rapping? When did you start rapping? Um, I think from um, just seeing like you know we from a rap city, right. so uh, I remember seeing like dudes and ciphers like my OG Nino. Um, he was with Takedown Records uh, when that when that first started, but before that. He was like, uh, he played ball, but he was also dope with his pit. And I would see him at like ciphers and shit like that, like 50 people around him in a crowd and everybody like, oh shit, and the reactions. And I was like, yo, I want that. What year was this? I had to be about 11. Okay. I had to be about 11, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, I was on Cecil Street then. And, um, I just, I wanted that. Right. Like I wanted that, you know what I mean? So I started writing and I would go to Nino and I'd be like, yo, you think this hot? I remember going to my first time, he was like, yeah, that's all right, young boy. And, you know, a couple months later, he like, you get nice. Third time I went to him, he like, oh, yeah, you a problem. Like, it was official. So, you know what I mean? He was definitely a big influence in my life to, like, really start in the music. You know what I'm saying? I remember uh, coming up, uh, seeing your uh, yeah, freestyles on YouTube. Yeah. That he was the first person that had a, a million views. You feel me? Like, a lot of views in on YouTube type yes. song. i never seen that being done. You yes. know what I'm saying? So... Speak on that because I think during that time we didn't know what YouTube was. Now everybody got a YouTube channel. Yeah. Everybody monetized them. Back then it was new to the world. Facts. So speak on um, doing that many views back in the day. So young. Um, it was like a blur to me. Like because when you're that young, I don't think you really understand what's going on. You're kind of just doing what you love. So we wasn't really worried about YouTube. We wasn't worried about the business side. We just was like doing what we love, going back and forth, being competitive. You know what I'm saying? Rapping our hearts out, like. We was we had that passion in us, and um, I don't think it really hit me until I got older and understood what we was missing and things that we missed out on. Like you know, it was dudes that was uploading us because we didn't like the videos that you seen on YouTube and six million views, three million views. We didn't know about uploading and, and making money. You know, some dude to this day, you go type type in one of my old videos, it, it got a name, his YouTube channel. Dude probably made thousands off me, like big bread off me, because at the time we was kids and we didn't know. You know what I mean? He might have had the knowledge and was like, I'm uploading it. And he, he Did was, you know him? Nah. You don't know him? Don't know him. Don't know him. Back then, it was cameras everywhere. You know, we from that DVD era. You know what I mean? Even the VHS era, the tapes, we was right there in that era, then DVD. So it was just like, dudes was just everywhere. Everybody had a camera. You know what I mean? So people was just probably grabbing that footage and knew what to do with it. You know what I mean? We was just out here blessing cameras, just doing what we love, man. But um, it hit me later in life, like, yo, like you really touched, like you touched the world, bro. Yeah, yeah. We, that, we touched the world. Six, yeah, yeah, we touched yeah, the world. That's, that's heavy. We touched the world, man, yeah, yeah. for sure. That's crazy. Major impact. For sure. Yeah. And then I, then I know um, you got signed. You feel me? You like one of the first rappers in your, in your area to get signed type time. Yeah. So speak on that, getting signed. Um, I tell you that. Uh, we got signed. I hooked up with uh, Vinny Defino. 
um, Aunt Renzuli, shout out to my peoples, they from South Philly, big Italian dudes down there on Tenth and Tasca, and um, it was some lawyers and uh, a couple dudes that had some businesses and restaurants, and OG at the time that was promoting us, the Jamaican homie, he uh, went to traffic court, and um, he was he promoted us everywhere. He was a promo junkie. His minivan was always packed with like the posters, the mixtapes, and stuff like that. So. Uh, he went to traffic court for some side shit, just for some traffic shit, and wound up giving a lawyer the CD. Like, yeah, that's my artist, man. You know, check him out. You know what I mean? My CD wound up making it back home to that lawyer's home where his kids were already around my age. You know, young Italian kids down there in South Philly. You know, we all, like, they know it's up with the black culture, so they was locked in on what was going on. And he was like, Dad, you know, really dollars? Like, he was geeked. And um, he called OG back, like, yo, my son. It's like losing his mind about this kid. Like, we want to meet him. So we went down to South Philly. We had to meet him or whatever. And, you know, they, we talked about some things. And they structured the deal around me. I said, like, a week later, they asked me what I wanted. About a week later, we came back down. We structured the deal, and they tried to make it happen. They had great intentions on making this shit happen. You know what I mean? I'm never going to shit on them. I just don't. I feel like they just didn't have the knowledge of the industry. Right. So they got taken advantage of, and a lot of shit didn't work, but they had all good intentions to make this shit work.